Okay, today we're talking about why should I use const? Now, const and let both have the same scoping abilities. So they both work with block level scoping. So there's no real difference there. But why should I bother to use const when declaring things instead of just using let everywhere? So I'll show you. One of the reasons is if you and somebody else are going to be writing different parts of the code and you don't want them to overwrite your code and you don't want to accidentally overwrite their code, when you declare something with const, like here, I've made a shortcut to console.log and I've used log as the variable. Now, I can not change this. If I come down here and I try to set something else to log, let's say I'm going to make it a shortcut now to console.warn instead. When I run my code, this is what I'm going to get. Assignment to constant variable. So this is a type error. I cannot do this. Whatever the whatever was placed inside of here, I cannot change that. So I cannot use this little piece of code again, log equals. I can never again reassign it. Now that doesn't mean that I can't put something inside of it. Let's say I used const and I created an object. Inside of here, I've got a property named A set to 1, 2, and 3. All right, now, if I try to reassign obj, make it another object, make it an array, whatever. If I try to do that, when I run it, I get an error. Assignment to constant variable. I'm not allowed to do obj and the equal sign. But what I can do is I can go inside and I can add new properties. That's going to go fine. I can even change the properties that are inside of here to something different. I can delete properties inside of there. There's nothing saying that I can't manipulate whatever is inside of this container. So this A, B, C, whatever properties I'm putting inside of here, I can still change those. So we run our code. Not a problem. I'm allowed to do that. I just can't change the container, which means if I'm creating a function if I use const and say f is equal to a function, now this cannot be overwritten. This function is tied to this variable. And if I'm running a library and I'm giving that to somebody else, they're not going to be able to change this because I've basically staked a claim on this variable name and I've said nobody else is allowed to use this. If they're using my JavaScript file, this variable name is bound to this function or this object, or whatever it is that you're putting it inside of. Okay, so that's the first part of why you should use const. It gives you great protection for your code when you are writing with other people or you're sharing code with somebody else. You're both providing code. All right, so that's the first part. Now, the second part of this, what's a practical use for const? Well, one of the things that you'll see people do with const is they'll use it to create lists of things. Now in this example, I've got an object. My object has some error types, some media types. I've got a couple of functions that I can call. So we could say my obj dot do something. And it's gonna run a bit of code. And this code is gonna return one of these values. So my obj dot error types dot not paid. I've created a list of the potential values and I'm sending back numbers. So I'm sending back what this error code is. I'm going to randomly send one of these. So let's save this and we'll run the code once just to see what happens. Error code one, two, one, zero. So I'm getting a random code. The important thing here is that I have defined things that look like property names but they're really just numeric values. So in my code, I'm using these numbers because the numbers are really easy to work with in the code if I'm writing the code. I've got this reference right in front of me. I know what the numbers represent. But if I'm writing something for somebody else, they're not necessarily going to know what those numbers mean. I mean, sure, yeah, you can have the documentation and list it off, like media types here. I've got 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4 are the possible values inside of my save media function, I'm going to be passing in a type and I'm going to be passing in some sort of data. So let's just say that it's going to write out a message depending on whether it's audio, video, or image. Now I call my code, I call my function, 
my obj and save media. Now I have to specify the type. All right, if I've got the documentation in front of me, I can look it up and say, oh yeah, okay, uh, zero, that was an audio file. So I can pass in the number zero and then whatever my audio file is. I'm just putting something there to have something. But isn't it much easier if you were calling this function and you could say myobj.mediatypes.audio. This is going to be much easier to remember than you specify that data, whatever it was that you're passing in. My MP3. Okay. Clear this. Run it again. I get the same result because the number is what's being used inside the code. If we look at the switch case statement, we're taking whatever this value is. I'm using that, and then I've got the different cases for whether it's audio, video, or an image. My code's going to deal with those three different file types in different ways. So the function wants a number, but as a human being, I'm going to be able to remember this a lot easier. All right, so where does const come out of this? Well, I've got this embedded inside of my object, but I could just take these things. If I remove this from here, I can come up above and we'll use const to declare this. So media types, and that's going to be equal to this object. Semicolon at the end, and then we'll have const error types. We'll do the exact same thing. There we go, and semicolon at the end. Now, I have used const, so I've made sure that these things cannot be overwritten. I've made it easier for myself to type because I've got these, one word, and then the property name. So down inside of here, nothing needs to change inside of this piece of code. In my do something, I was using myobj error types not paid. I can just remove the myobj in front of that. Like this. Now I'm pointing to these constants to write out what those numbers are. And down in my code here, again. So I can put in the number zero, or I can use a const. And my const, it's this thing that's gonna be predefined. It can't be overwritten. Now I can come in and change these things, but I can use property descriptors to make sure that these things can't be changed as well. The important thing is we have this media types it's a constant, it's defined, so they're not going to accidentally use this variable name, but I've got something much easier to remember, a word, instead of, okay, yeah, what did the number three mean? I can't remember exactly what that was, but if I remember that media types had a JPEG, now I can do this, and that is going to be much easier for me to remember. So it's saving an image. All I had to remember was the name of the property and then the file type, which I'm already going to be thinking about anyway because I'm dealing with a certain kind of image. All right, so there's a couple of use cases why you would want to use const. A lot of it has to do with sharing your code with other people and making your code easier to read and better protected so that people can't mess around with it later on. All right, if you have any questions, feel free to leave those in the comments down below. And as always, thanks for watching.